What good YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. We got the unathletic NFL star who destroyed everyone. Let's check this out. Tom Brady, man. It's, like, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? This bro, this dude was like what a six round pick and end up with seven rings. Seven. Beat literally every single team in the NFL. Tom Brady terrorized the NFL for Crazy. 22 seasons. But before his GOAT status, seven Super Bowls. And like, bro, like realistically, bro, I think Tom Brady could still play in the NFL, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it was smart for him to retire when he did. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? He, he's he's accomplished pretty much everything. You know what I'm saying? NFL. He's got seven Super Bowl rings. The, he leads the NFL, you know what I'm saying? Passing yards in a career, passing touchdowns, completions. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's done it all. He looked like this. And he was a likable underdog. And bro stayed healthy, too. Like, what, what more could you want out of a career like that? We need to go back. Back to the beginning. Okay. Oh yeah, shit. Who, like, bro, if it wasn't for Bledsoe getting yes. hurt, we would not have Tom Brady. Uh, not here, even further. Thomas Edward Patrick Brady, born August third, nineteen ninety-six. Damn, nigga had a bowl cut in his bed. Niners fan during the peak of a San Francisco football legend, Joe okay. Montana. Montana. Niners legend. Damn, that was a dot. Brady famously discussed his attendance of the 1981 NFC Championship where Montana threw the catch to Dwight Clark. Except, he was probably the only 49ers fan in the crowd that wasn't happy during this moment. Brady said that when he watched hmm? Montana, he always felt like he was in control and whenever he dropped back to pass, something good was gonna happen. This sentiment which football fans would feel about Brady in the future began to build resentment as his career progressed. But before that he attended Junipero Sierra High School where he played football, basketball, and baseball. His football career began in 1991 during his freshman year of high school, where he served as a backup quarterback for a team that went 0-8 without scoring a single touchdown. But wow. I, I was the one that no one ever picked. That was the backup quarterback on a freshman team that didn't win a game. Damn. I only played my second year because my best friend, who was the quarterback who started ahead of me, he quit playing. Despite early wow. struggles, he eventually That's claimed crazy. the starting varsity spot for his junior and senior seasons. With a decent arm and a true passion for the game, Brady was able to get offers from several schools, including Cal, UCLA, USC, and Michigan. What was most likely a tough choice for Brady to make, he ultimately chose to commit to the University of Michigan for the 1995 season. Sure, during his freshman year, he struggled to find any playing time behind future NFL quarterback Brian and Greasy. Greasy led the Wolverines to an undefeated season in 1997 and a share of the national championship that year. Brady, on the other hand, would throw only 15 passes during the season. While frustrated, he contemplated a transfer, but he showed his persistence and stayed at Michigan. Despite being buried on the depth chart for his first three seasons, Brady's hard work and dedication began to pay off in his junior year in 1998 when he finally earned the starting quarterback position. That season, he started every game and led the Wolverines to a 10-3 record in a Citrus Damn. Bowl victory, passing for 2,427 okay. yards and 14 touchdowns. With such a stellar season, it seemed like there was nothing from stopping him from continuing to improve his senior year, but something was going to jeopardize that. Uh, Before his senior season, a tight quarterback battle and tons of upside potential from sophomore Drew Henson led Michigan's head coach Lloyd Carr to make a difficult decision. Henson was an ultra-talented player who Brady even described as faster, stronger, and possessed a better arm than he did. To start the season, Carr decided that both Brady and Henson would each play a quarter before he decided the starter for the second half. Through the first five games, this worked as Michigan started the season a perfect 5-0. But the okay. strategy soon collapsed in week six as Michigan fell behind by 17 points in the second half with Henson playing. Brady Ooh. would enter the game and be tasked with leading a comeback, and he narrowly did. However, Damn. they would fall short by just three points. The following That's week, Brady tough. would throw for over 300 yards. That means the Brady should be the starter, man. Shit. Over. And one of his most memorable college moments came later that season when trailing by 10 points with just minutes left against Penn State. He led the Wolverines on a comeback and found the end zone twice 
securing the victory 31-27. This earned him the honorary nickname, the Comeback Kid, something he shared with his childhood idol, Joe oh, Montana. Shit. But unbeknownst to him, his ability to perform in clutch moments would eventually lead him to becoming the most hated player of all time. He yes, finished his bro. senior season with two Hated this nigga in the AFC, bro. <laughs> like, damn. Touchdowns, and he capped it off with an Orange Bowl victory against Alabama, a game in which he threw for 369 yards and four touchdowns. Despite sharing time with Henson, Brady showcased his resilience in the face of adversity, which should have brought him more attention from NFL scouts. Though many looked at the situation with Drew Henson as a red flag due to the appearance that Lloyd Carr was trying to replace him as the quarterback. When it came to the NFL combine, Brady didn't really impress either. His draft report included the following. Poor build, skinny, lacks a strong arm, doesn't throw a tight spiral, gets knocked down too easily. No cut. But it, 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 don't ma it don't matter how many times you get knocked down, bro. It's just all about how you get back up. You feel me? Draft and projected him you to feel in the fifth me? Round. But he Cause Brady was a tough ass in nigga. Round, and there were six other quarterbacks that were like, cause I think he only had what uh, one serious draft. entry in his Brady whole career. Six, these now it's that knee injury he had. In first round, Giovanni Carmazzi and Chris Redman in the third, T. Martin in the fifth, and both Mark Bolger and Spurgeon Wynn were taken in the sixth round. Finally, at pick number one ninety nine, Tom Brady was selected by the New England Patriots, Yo. and it was a miracle he even made the roster. At the time, Brady was kept on as the fourth quarterback on the depth chart, something he was familiar with from his time at Michigan. Before he was drafted, the New England Patriots were not the franchise many fans of the NFL experienced throughout the 2000s. They had played in two Super Bowls in 1985, a 46-10 blowout against oh the Chicago gosh. Bears. In 1996, a 35-21 loss to the Green Bay Packers. And it was getting in 2000, they hired Bill out in the Belichick, fucking Super Bowl. Who had served as a team's assistant Back shots head coach crazy Bill Parcells game. during the 1996 oh, season. Belichick said he kept Brady as the fourth quarterback on the roster because they believed he had potential to continue to improve despite knowing he may never play a snap in the 2000 season. The team finished with a 5-11 record and Brady played in just a single game and completed just one of three passes. Not what you'd expect from a future seven-time Super Bowl winner. After the season, there were no signs that Brady would take over the starting role for the Patriots. New England's current starter was Drew Bledsoe, who had been selected in the first round of the 1993 NFL Draft. And in March of 2001, he signed the largest NFL contract Damn, to date, ten -year, a 10-year deal million. worth $103 million. Sheesh. But Brady had worked his way up the depth chart into the backup position prior to the 2001 season and he said he always felt this i always said in my mind and this is just you know you have your own inner thoughts but i always felt like if i ever get a chance they're never going to take me off the field a lot yep. of people probably feel this, and that's exactly what happened. A lot of them end up like Brady. After a disappointing 23 to 17 loss in Week One, the Patriots trailed in Week Two against the New York Jets. Bledsoe was absolutely crushed by Mo Lewis and had knocked yeah. him out of the game. Brady would enter without Mo Lewis, there would not be no Tom Brady. In the NFL, and although he wasn't able to find the end zone, the NFL was forever changed at that moment. The next week, he would make his first career start against the 1998 number one pick Peyton Manning in the. Indianapolis Colts. The Patriots would defeat them in a blow. Damn, 44 to 13 for their first win on the season. That's well, bro. Brady that's that's some Brock Purdy shit right there. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Both of them did that shit. Did blowouts in their first games in the NFL, bro. Like that shit is crazy. 13 of 23 passes for 168 yards. As most people probably believe Brady was just filling in until Bledsoe returned, they did not realize that they had just witnessed the start of the greatest rivalry in NFL history. Then week five is where the world would get a glimpse of what the future held for Tom Brady. He threw for 364 yards with his first two touchdown passes of his career. Brady led the Patriots back from a 10 point deficit in the fourth quarter against the San Diego Chargers in an overtime win something that became wow. the norm for him throughout his career. Over the next four games, Brady led the Patriots to a 4-1 record throwing nine touchdowns and five interceptions, once again defeating Peyton Manning in the process. Prior to week 10 of the 2001 regular season, Bledsoe was finally cleared from injury and all eyes were on coach Bill Belichick. But he would decide to start Tom Brady for the remainder of the season, stating he was making the best decision for the team. With Brady leading the way, the Patriots closed out the season with a 6-1 record 
and secure the second seed in the AFC. Entering the playoffs, the team was viewed as aspiring underdogs led by an unlikely sixth round quarterback. At Gillette Stadium in what would be one of the oh, most memorable games of Brady's career, New England hosted the Oakland Raiders. Late in the fourth quarter with the game on the line, Brady fumbled the ball and the Raiders recovered it which ended the Cinderella story for the 2001 season or at least it should have, but in one of the most obscure rulings in NFL history, the call was overturned, citing the tuck rule. Because of this, New England retained possession. Brady set up a game-tying field goal from Adam Vinatieri, who did not let him down and sent the game to overtime, tied 13-13. In overtime, the Patriots drove 63 yards down the field for Vinatieri to hit the game-winning field goal and sent and them the to the snow, AFC bro, like that shit is the tough. The infamous tuck rule game lives on in history for many fans around the NFL it might be a source of resentment towards Brady. He himself said this on the matter years later. Gordon, what? If the ball was tucked, look what would happen. All right. I'd have held on to the ball. Okay, I, all right, I'll okay. give you that. Doesn't all right. take much pressure to knock it out at that point. Go ahead. Fumble. Or, in this case, tuck <laughs> roll. Fumble or not, they won the game and were headed to the AFC Championship to play against the Pittsburgh Steelers as 10-point underdogs. This game was a primarily defensive showdown between the two teams. Late in the second quarter while the Patriots were driving, Brady Ooh. would be injured and left the game. The man who had replaced Brady and had embraced the role of a backup would enter the game. Bledsoe was able to get the Patriots in the end zone and hold off the Steelers, allowing a 24-17 upset for the Patriots who advanced to Super Bowl 36. Brady was cleared to play in the Super Bowl, but there was a tall task stacked against him and the Patriots. Their opponent were the number one seed, St. Louis Rams. Known as the greatest show on turf, the Rams had won the Super Bowl just two years prior and were 14 point favorites over the Patriots. A true David Kurt versus Warner. Goliath matchup for Brady and New England. New England would enter halftime holding a 14 to 3. That is crazy, to bro. Shut down the Rams' explosive offense forever. The Rams would score like you like you love to hear these underdog the stories man tied 17 to 17 with just one minute and 21 seconds left on the clock they allowed brady a chance to get them down the field and win the game in a drive that started at new england's own 17 yard line brady was able to get them to the rams 30 before spiking the ball with seven seconds left on the clock adam vinatieri once again came up clutch drilling a 48 yard field goal and securing the super bowl for new england and tom brady the 190 99th pick was named Super Bowl MVP and he made history for New England completing one of the greatest underdog stories in sports. Facts. Damn, bro. The following season, Brady led the NFL in touchdown passes, throwing 28, but the Patriots would finish. That's crazy that that was the highest back then, 28. Playoffs. This could have been the end of the story, and Tom Brady would have been forever loved by most NFL fans for his Super Bowl victory in 2001. But for Brady, this was just the beginning. In the next season, he led the yeah. Patriots to an NFL best 14 and 2 record and the number one seed in the 2003 playoffs. In the divisional round, the Patriots defeated the Tennessee Titans 7 to 14 in advance to the AFC Championship. This was the first meeting in the playoffs between Brady's Patriots and Manning's Colts. Earlier in the season, the Patriots had defeated the Colts 38 to 34 for one of Indy's four losses on the season. Manning was looking for redemption, but there was none for him to find. While Brady threw for 237 yards with a touchdown and an interception, Manning threw for four interceptions and finished the game Damn, with a four picks is crazy passer rating. The Patriots headed to their second Super Bowl in three years with the 24-14 victory. Super okay. Bowl 38 was a matchup between New England and the Carolina Panthers who were making their first Super Bowl appearance in franchise history. New England was favored by Damn, seven so the, points in the game. So the Panthers are 0-2 in the, the, the Super Bowl. Seconds. With the game that is tied crazy. at 29, Brady would have the ball at the 40-yard line with just over a minute left on the clock. In four plays, the Patriots entered field goal range and set up another game-winning opportunity for Vinatieri. Once again, he did not disappoint and secured the victory for New England. The quarterback that no one wanted was now a two-time Super Bowl champion and MVP. Brady had once again delivered a signature game-winning drive that seemed to be slowly becoming his norm, and it was definitely being noticed by fans around the league. 
In the next season, the Patriots once again finished with a 14-2 record and were the two seed in the AFC. Brady and Manning once again matched up in the playoffs and similar to their first meeting, the Patriots easily dispatched Wow. Them. Despite so being Brady the had seed, Peyton Manning's the number. Favorites for the but it, it's AFC. ironic that Peyton's younger brother, Eli, was able to get Brady's number, bro. That shit is crazy. Against the Pittsburgh Steelers. In week if eight, I was Peyton, I would have been heated, gang. Actually, what you mean my younger brother can beat you and I can't? And one of Brady's worst crazy. performances on the season. But New England would control this game from start to finish, forcing four turnovers on defense and committing none themselves. Brady Damn. threw for 207 yards with two touchdowns, helping the Patriots to a 41 to 27 victory and sending Holy them shit. to back-to-back -back Super Bowls. In Super Bowl 39, the NFC number one seed Philadelphia Eagles were seven point underdogs to the Patriots. But yet again, this is a tightly contested game in which the Eagles and Patriots traded so off. So Brady played the, the Eagles game. twice the Eagles in, were able to um, score late in the fourth but were unable to recover an onside kick. However, it was not Brady who came up clutch for them this time, rather their defense. Safety Rodney Harrison came up with an mm. interception with just nine seconds left on the clock, allowing Brady to take a knee and end the game. Brady had not only helped the Patriots achieve their first ever Super Bowl win four years prior, but he had officially completed a dynasty. Along the way, he had won two Super Bowl MVPs and finished a perfect 9-0 to start his playoff career, a record that will most likely never be broken. But along with solidifying himself in greatness came the backlash. While the story of the 199th pick that had led a suffering franchise to their first Super Bowl was incredible, things were changing. It was now clear that Tom Brady was not just someone who got lucky and won a Super Bowl. Wait, wait, not, right. not yet. He was far oh, Nick more than that and with success always comes people rooting for your downfall. Similar to the recent dynasties in sports, such as the current Kansas City oh Chiefs gosh, and the Golden bro. State Warriors. Like, bro, I thought after Tom left the fucking Patriots, I thought we were done with this bullshit in the AFC. We got, but we got to deal with this nigga Mahomes. Like, bro. Nigga, go somewhere, bro. Shit, retire. <laughs> like, bro, you've done enough. Damn. You become fatigued of seeing repetitive success, which begins to build resentment and hate towards the faces of these franchises. For Brady in 2004, it was no different. Not to mention what was to come in the following years for the team. Over the next two seasons, Brady led the Patriots to respectable 10-6 and 12-4 and and records. Yet in the 2005 playoffs, the Patriots would not escape the divisional round and prevent them Damn. from a three-peat. In 2006, Brady and New England See, this is why, bro, I'm telling you, no team in NFL history is ever going to three-peat, bro. I'm telling you right now. That shit is just too difficult to do. It's already tough to, to win back-to-back. -back. Colts scored 32 points while holding New England to just 11, and for the first time on one of the biggest stages, Brady was unable to complete a game-winning drive. Manning and the Colts would go on to defeat the Chicago Bears in Super Bowl 41. Prior to the 2007 season, New England made two crucial offseason trades. Randy Moss. Welker from the Miami it's Dolphins crazy they Randy still Moss did not win a Super Bowl with Randy Moss after going, what, 17-0? and 0? During the 2007 NFL Draft, he was traded to the Patriots for just a fourth round pick. With these new weapons, Brady and the Patriots entered the 2007 season playing for 18 and 0 well, it was one of them. Jets. It was an absolute beatdown. Brady threw for 297 yards and three touchdowns. Moss and Welker would each have a touchdown in the 38 to 14 win. But Damn. something else had happened during this game that brought far more hate to Tom Brady than his success. What happened? The league's first proven case of sideline spying has also revealed... Oh, yeah, I remember this. Patriots coach Bill Belichick had an assistant videotape signals, or play calls, being sent onto the field by the New York Jets last Sunday. That is crazy, bro. ...are raising new questions. The Patriots have won three Super Bowls in the last six years, a dynasty. Now many are wondering if it's a dynasty built on deceit. In 2007, a scandal referred spy to as Spygate began to surface. It was These niggas had a whole bunch of sk scandals, bro. The Spygate, the goddamn Deflate Gate. Many members of the These motherfuckers love cheating. This nigga like Daniel Jones. Revealed that the practice had been done since the 2000 season. The NFL launched a full investigation of the incident, and the outcome resulted in a half a million dollar fine for head coach Belichick and a loss of their 2008 first round draft pick. 
While several allegations were made that the Patriots taped the St. Louis Rams walkthrough prior to Super Bowl 36, there was no evidence that supported this. But if you ask players of the Rams, they'll all tell you that the Patriots definitely did it. And this would not prevent outrage among the NFL fans. Still to this day, believe the first Yo. dynasty was built on cheating. Well, they believe both dynasties were built on cheating, but we'll get to that eventually. What probably angered fans even more was how Tom Brady and the New England Patriots responded throughout the season. They put together one of the most historic runs, dominating opponents on both sides of the ball Damn. and route to a perfect 16-0 regular 16 season, the first and only in NFL history. Brady won the NFL MVP with a record setting 50 touchdown season breaking Peyton Manning's 2004 record of 49. He was catching an NFL record 23 passes from Brady and racked up 1,023 touches. I think that's still a record, right? Their season with the number one offense and number 23 four defense in the league. In the playoffs, they made wait. Was that season is that Mike Vrabel? Offense and number is Mike Vrabel? Four defense in the yeah. In the playoffs, they made quick work of the Jacksonville Jaguars and San Diego Chargers and route to Super Bowl 42, where they were 12 point favorites. Their opponents were the so New they were York 18 Giants, and 0 going into this game. Peyton's brother. Experts would predict this to be a blowout from start to finish, yet it was tightly contested for the entire game. The Patriots held a 14-10 lead late in the fourth quarter, but heroics from Manning and an improbable catch from David Tyree allowed the Giants to take the lead with just 30 seconds left on the clock. With no timeouts and a full field to cover, Brady resorted launching the ball deep but to no avail. The Giants had pulled off one of the most unlikely upsets in Super Bowl history and prevented the Patriots from achieving their perfect season. A satisfying end for fans that felt Brady and the Patriots deserved harsher punishments for Spygate early in the year. But for those who felt it was still not enough, we're gonna get what they possibly wished for the next season. In week one of the 2008 oh, Brady got season, hurt. Brady dropped back to pass in the first mm. quarter and was hit as he threw the ball. The result of the hit was a torn ACL and MCL in his left leg, Damn. resulting in a surgery that caused him to miss the rest of the season. Satisfying justice for a cheater or an untimely injury. In the 2009 season, Maybe Brady Carmen. bounced you never back know. his injury, leading the Patriots to a 10-6 record and winning the NFL Comeback Player of the Year. The team would end up losing 33-14 in the divisional round of the Baltimore Ravens. Yes, Brady sir, Block Nation. In 2010, throwing for 36 touchdowns and only four interceptions, securing his second NFL MVP. As a team, they finished the season with a 14-2 record and hosted the number six seed New York Jets in the divisional round. In a massive upset, the Jets won the game 28-21 and headed to the AFC wow. Championship. NFL fans who were tired of seeing the Patriots and Brady win could once again rejoice as they were eliminated. Yet this joy was short-lived as in 2011, the Patriots made another deep run. In the AFC Championship game, the Patriots held a three-point lead against the Baltimore Ravens and fate was on their side. To everyone's dismay, with just seconds this left shit, on the clock, bro. Billy Cundiff would miss Billy the Cundiff, field bro. goal and this advance nigga New England to the so Super Bowl. So terrible. Yet. Super Bowl 46 was a rematch between the Patriots and Giants. Though the Giants had ended their perfect season in 2007, many believe this was going to be Brady's revenge. Manning was and able it wasn't. to make incredible passes down the stretch, and New York capped it off with a touchdown run from Ahmad Bradshaw. Brady needed to produce another signature drive to secure the win, with just seconds remaining. Manning, he heaved up a prayer, but no one caught the ball. Eli Manning took down Brady and secured his second Super Bowl MVP with a 21-17 victory. Another satisfying end of the season for fans that did not want to see the Patriots win another Super Bowl after their run of dominance and scandals. Over the next two seasons, Brady helped the Patriots to a 12-4 record in AFC Championship appearances. And in 2013, Peyton Manning, now a Denver Bronco, defeated Brady again. At this point, Brady had gone almost 10 years without winning a four Super Bowl, and at the age of 37, many believed he was running out of opportunities. Yet in 2014, the Patriots once again closed out the season with a 12-4 record and were in the AFC Championship game. This time facing off with the Colts and Manning's successor, Andrew Luck. Tom Brady helped the Patriots out to an early lead and they would never look back, steamrolling the Colts 45 to 17. Something that occurred in this game that would spark so much controversy for Brady in New England, but we'll get to that shortly. In Super Bowl 49, the Patriots would play against the defending champion Seattle Seahawks. New England would strike first, but Seattle would back, and this is a theme throughout the game. At the goal line. The score at halftime was tied 14. 
Malcolm Butler. With just two minutes left on the clock, the Seahawks had a chance to take the lead. Reminiscent of the David Tyree helmet catch, Jermaine Curse made one of the most unlikely that catches shit was and unreal, the bro. Just yards away from the end zone. A miracle play when they needed it the most. But it that was snapshot is crazy. Oh, what the fuck? He got a shoe up his ass? In the league. For no reason, Pete Carroll decided to call a pass play. And like, bro, and like, look at how much cushion Malcolm Butler has on this, bro. Like, come on, why would you even try to run this? Really? Pass play, and Malcolm Butler intercepted the ball at the goal line. And after 10 long years, Brady had his fourth Super Bowl. He was now tied with his idol, Joe Montana, for most Super Bowl victories by a player. The most hated man in the NFL had done it again, and more hate was about to come his way because of the AFC Championship. So can you answer right now, is Tom Brady a cheater? <laughs> wow. They or didn't they? It's the alleged cheating scandal launching a thousand saucy headlines. Deflate gate. The NFL would launch an investigation into whether or not the Patriots, we go. specifically Brady, had tampered with game balls prior to the AFC Championship. The NFL ruled Brady was to serve a four-game suspension for his involvement. Brady appealed this and was allowed to play for the entire 2015 season while appeal hearings were underway. The Patriots would find themselves back in the AFC Championship once again and play against Peyton Manning's Broncos. This would be the final game ever played between Manning and Brady, with Manning getting the last laugh in a 20 to 18 victory after the season yeah, i think Brady i think didn't pay man and win the super bowl that year the suspension but after a long effort he finally decided to serve them in 2016 this is all many fans needed to cast the guilty verdict on brady and continue to amass resentment for him while he served his suspension the patriots began the season three and one before brady returned and closed out the season with an 11 and one record they would steamroll their way to super bowl 51 where they were favored by three points over the atlanta 28 3 Huh? The game did not go as planned for Brady New England, though. The Falcons were able to find yeah, I just, I still don't understand the how the fuck the Falcons blew this. Yard pick six to make the score like the Falcons were in full control so get on the board and then just allow this nigga Tom Brady to come back. Come on. By 18 just can't do that. And out of halftime, the Falcons would find the end zone again with the scoreboard reading. An like, bro, look how much time is left, bro. 16 minutes left on this clock. And y'all couldn't stop them from scoring. To tie the fucking game up, bro. To oh man! The and sending this shit into overtime for them to win it. With a little help from the Falcons for getting to run the ball, the comeback. Then that that Pages defense was locking shit up too. Edelman would also help him out with his own. That man, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick must have been, you know what I'm saying, letting them have it in the locker room at halftime. And in overtime, New England would march right down the field and secure the James victory White. in the largest Super Bowl comeback in history. Damn. Brady himself you saw, bro, you saw Brady's head snap back. The largest Super Bowl bro, he picks that Brady shit too. Yo. Fourth MVP with a Super Bowl record 466 passing yard performance. He had now oh separated gosh. himself from everyone as a player with the most Super Bowl championships. The next year, led by a third MVP winning performance, the Patriots are right back in the Super Bowl facing off with the Philadelphia and they, they lost this one. Their quarterback for the game was Nick Foles. Nick yeah, that Foles. Guy who I brought up earlier. Philly He's special. Only starting in place of the injured Carson Wentz. A Philly, Philly situation to how Brady found himself in his first Super Bowl. Wire to wire, this game was close with both offenses. It is a great game. Unstoppable and no defense to be found. Brady found himself in a situation he had been in many times in the big game. Trans with just over two minutes left. Yet this time was and different. Brandon Graham, Brandon man. Brandon Graham was able to strip Brady and force a turnover. The resulting possession was a field goal that all but sealed New England's fate in a 41 to 33 upset. Fans could once again rejoice as Brady had been prevented from winning another Super Bowl. At this point, most quarterbacks begin to slow down severely. Brady showed no signs of regression in his game and once again led the Patriots back to the AFC Championship. They face off with the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh uh, yeah, and then, the NFL and hey, my Holmes could never beat Brady, bro. The greatest playoff games to ever that's that's all, that's Mahomes pretty much the only thing we can say about Mahomes for real. For he's never beat Tom Brady. In the game, Brady, Brady always had his number to end the game. Or wait, there's a flag. 
Wait, maybe this guy does get every call. Kansas City was forced to settle for a field goal to send the game to overtime. New England once again received the kickoff and was able to march down the field and send them to the Super Bowl. As thrilling of a game as the AFC Championship was, the Super Bowl was just as boring. A true defensive battle yeah. with the Los Angeles Rams. I ain't gonna I fell asleep during this game. <laughs> I like time. woke up the in like the fourth and quarter or some shit. The wasn't scored until the fourth quarter when Sony Michelle found the end zone. With a Gilmore pick and a Gotowski field goal, the game was sealed with a 13-3 victory. Brady had won his sixth ring. At the age of 41, Brady still showed no signs of slowing down, leading the 2019 Patriots to a 12-4 record. Brady threw what would end up being his final pass in a Patriots uniform. A pick satisfying six. pick six to mm. lose the AFC Wild against man. the Tennessee Titans. In the offseason, it appeared as though New England and Brady could not reach an agreement on what the next step for the franchise should be. And in March of 2020, Sound. Brady Like, bro, the fact this man won six rings with the Patriots, leaves, goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and wins his seventh ring... Like, bro, that tells you all you need to know, bro, that this nigga Tom Brady, like, bro, he saved this nigga. He carried Bill Belichick and he saved the career. Now, Bill Belichick was a good head coach. I'm not saying he wasn't. But you got to admit, this nigga Tom Brady carried Bill Belichick his whole career. Next step for the franchise. Single-handedly, bro. In March of 2020, Brady decided to sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This departure marked the end of a 20-season run with the Patriots. A talented Bucs roster always felt like they were just a quarterback away from making a deep playoff run. And who better to do it than the six-time Super Bowl champion? Brady led Tampa to an 11-5 record that season and a wild-card playoff berth. In the wild-card round, the Buccaneers defeated the Washington football team 31-23 to before heading to New Orleans. Brady squared off with another legendary quarterback, Drew, Drew Brees. The time I think this was the last time Drew Brees played. In a tight game, the Buccaneers would come out on top in a 30-20 to victory and headed to the NFC Championship game. He would face off with another legend, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Now this game was crazy. With a 31 to 26 victory. Brady became the first quarterback in NFL history to win both the NFC and AFC championship game as they head to Super Bowl 55. Their opponents he, Super Bowl 55, He's literally the only QB that's done that. That's actually insane. Now defending There's another record to add to his resume. Shit. Chiefs. While the Chiefs was favored, it would not have been obvious from viewing this game. The Buccaneers defense was able to hold yeah, the that defense like just three and it, it, it was the offensive line though, but the offensive line was getting cooked the whole fucking game. This nigga Mahomes was running for his life. Did Mahomes actually play pretty decent too? Especially when he made that, you know what I'm saying, that unbelievable um horizontal throw that could have been a touchdown if the receiver didn't drop it throughout the game. As for Brady, he threw for 201 yards and three touchdowns in a 31-9 victory, winning his fifth Super Bowl MVP in the process. Oh. Brady had separated himself even more now with a record seven Super Bowl rings. In 2021, at the age of 43, Brady's playing ability had still not regressed. He threw for 5,316 yards, his first time breaking the 5,000 yard mark in his career. And, and it's crazy he didn't. He didn't win MVP this season too, by the way, bro. Like. So Losing the division Yo, round, I think A Rod won um, MVP. Rams in a thrilling game. Brady would almost bring the Buccaneers back from a 27 to 3 deficit, but would ultimately lose the game 30 to 27. Yeah. Because niggas can't guard Cooper Cup. Until he decided it wasn't and decided he should try to break Brett Favre's retirement record. And let's just say this season was less memorable for him, and he definitely looked like a 44 year old quarterback trying to play. At this point, Brady chose to call it quits. What is your most hated memory of Tom Brady? Let me know in the comments. You below. already know when they beat us in the AFC Championship game, bro. The year before we won the Super Bowl in 2012. Like, bro, that shit had me heated, gang. I'm not even going to hold you. But, hey, bro. You know what I'm saying? I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you, I, I, I want to ask y'all this, though. Do y'all think that Mahomes will end up passing Brady? Because he's at three rings right now. You know what I'm saying? He need he needs four more to get where Brady's at. You feel me? So will he end up getting to seven or getting past seven? I like me personally, bro. You know what I'm saying? Cause of how how crazy the AFC is, bro. I just don't think he's gonna end up getting seven rings. Maybe at least one or or two more rings. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think he's gonna get to seven. But um, I wanna know what you guys think down in the comments below. You know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know what other NFL videos y'all want me to react to. Without further ado, I'm out. Yeah!